Bye, lady. I'm gonna miss we'll you and your pretty like necklace. Again. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I've turned into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the Asshole Mine incident. I have to take a look in there. There's got to be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Kevin, question! Yes? Who does, who does Gumshoe love? Edgeworth! No, he loves Maggie, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> he loves Edgeworth! <laughs> He doesn't love Edgeworth, he, fall, he falls around and admires him. Phoenix loves Edgeworth, everybody knows it. Present the letter of resignation. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've pushed him this far! Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. At first I thought it was cold as ice, but now I know different. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... we betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I've made up my mind. But, but... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that if someone found out. They wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me, it's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this, for Mr. Edgeworth's sake. All right, detective. Thank you. Gumshoe is not as slow as you think. He knows the score. Presumably. He knows the score, or at least he's seen it in the script. Move, 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 move. We gotta move, gotta move, gotta move. Da, 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 da. <laughs> hey guys, Mr. Wright. Open sesame. If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you two to bail me out. Ah! Ah! I'm sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah! Detective Gumshoe. What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what's the point in giving us the ID card? Hey, don't do that to my card! I hardly ever get a chance to come in here, so I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Let's look around, Kevin! What, what can we examine, Cat? Many things! Anything that has examined come over it. 
Points of interest. Mm. I know what the most interesting thing in this room is, don't you? Yeah, let's, let's start with that. That window. <laughs> <laughs> the window. Look at that giant window. Makes you want to crash through it and jump outside. Uh, this is the 15th floor. I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Note to self, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as he doesn't go crashing through the window when he gets fired. Don't say that! This was Lana's desk. Sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever- Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gaunt must still keep it clean in memory of the partnership. They were the stuff legends are made of. Does he keep it in memory of her or in memory of the crime? These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey! This is when Lana and I went to that theme park! And then bad memories were stirred. Shit, 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 picture, picture. This was taken on that day two years ago. The day Joe Doric ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Nima. After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here, then went along with Chief Gaunt to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? <laughs> so what were you saying about him? This mark looks like some kind of flower. Where it is, it's designed after the insignia on the prosecutor's batch. Prosecutor's badge? Yeah, like the one hanging from your collar. What? They have badges too? The design's supposed to portray the severity of the punishment system. Now that you mention it, it does look all pointy and kind of painful. But Edgeworth never wears a badge. That's because he's a sharp dresser. A badge like that wouldn't go too well with his outfit. So sharp dressers don't need to wear badges. I guess everyone just kind of lets it slide. I don't see how that's supposed to signify severe punishment. By the way, yes, it is like made of frills. It's literally frills. Anyway, let's look at genuinely interesting things. <laughs> wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk! Speaking of that, when were we here, when were we here earlier? It's a flashback, you don't need to. Okay? Words, words, words. <laughs> the past, past, past. I wonder what the ghost was reading. No, this looks can... like a list of evidence. Used in the case. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this. Hey, look at the case name! Huh? This old nine incident? I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what- No, 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 about evidence lists. Normally, they're twice as long? That's right. I guess it wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about the case! It would appear so. Oh! We went looking at the desk again. We found this inside the drawer. A list of evidence from the SL9 incident. Mr. Edgeworth had the other half of the list. 
What would this list be doing here? We'd better look a little more into this list. Just in case you wanted to know what was said after you picked that up. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons? Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for invitations. First the pipe organ, now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh, be careful what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out! You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. That's bloody scary. Anyway, let's examine the pipe organ, because we should do, right, Kevin? Yup. The lead pipe is missing from the sentence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Say it, go on. <laughs> no. The cheese pipe organ sure is a sight to behold. That's what she said! <laughs> the gum she said it. I refer you to my previous statement. <laughs> the chief's pipe organ sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally we heard playing it from the criminal affairs department. It gets worse. <laughs> it's actually That's getting on worse. the second floor and this is the 15th. Oh my what god, is... it's getting... <laughs> It is! It is! Now you understand what I explained to you before we started this. <laughs> when a detective screws up, the chief calls him up to the office and makes him listen to the organ for hours. Oh, What's so bad about that? <laughs> What's so bad about that? Music soothes us all. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except the ringing in his ears. <laughs> so it's an instrument of punishment. <laughs> Literally. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. That's beside the point. But that was a very good joke. That was fantastic, actually. That made everything less terrifying. Anyway, we've got something to look at here. This is a safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered in this panel to open it. A seven digit number. I think I might know what it is. Okay, by the way, Gumshoe, according to this walkthrough, actually had two things to say, but it really doesn't matter. I don't think it really reveals anything at all. I don't think they'd let you break sequence like this if it mattered. So, um... Hmm. Have a guess. <laughs> I Have might a guess. know what you the number is. You never know. You may get it right. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birthday? That's... Holy shit, we zoomed in. I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. What's the code, Gavin? We need seven digits. Where have we heard seven digits before? Gavin? Oh, don't look at me. I'm gonna just... The ID cards have seven digits, if that helps. I don't think it has I... anything to do with the ID cards. What was the one ID card we couldn't identify? <laughs> don't look at me, I'm just... Don't look at me, I'm just a voice. You wanna run his... You wanna run your fingers through Duke Devon's head, do you? Anyway, we got it. We got it open. Look, yeah, it works. We bullshit that. Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? Seven, 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 seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? 
the number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... 777777777, that ID number? I think you're... I can't even count. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Well, I know, seriously, we have two messages here, but it doesn't really matter at this point. That just establishes that Gant's on this side and Lan is on that side. And, um, that's Gumshu mentioning. That's Gumshu mentioning. Um, are you suspecting Gant? And you guys are like, um, Edgeworth's in trouble? <laughs> anyway, we've got a thing to examine. And we've got some epic music to examine it to. Is there any money in there? How much is the app stashed away? Look, it's a. a it's a shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's something else in here too. What's that? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw one. I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Well, it was just a bot. Is that it? That was all there was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. But unless you can prove they have something to do with the case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SM9 incident? Come on! There's gotta be something we can try and detect it! Hmm. If only we had some kind of list or something that fits that. If only we had some kind of part. No oh god, not that kind! We're talking to a police officer! Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? All of us put that back together. Oh, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from the case? That's right. One of the shards is an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean, you mean this one, right? That was in the safe? Yeah, that one. That was in the safe. Now you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, It'll prove Chief Gunt was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. <laughs> there, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means Chief Gunt willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in the safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey guys, get a look at this! What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different than the others. There's a reddish line on it! A reddish line? A reddish line? That's blood! I don't get it! Why would Chief Gant hide this in the safe? Hmm. That don't look good. Go 
him. Does that look good to you? I don't think that looks good for some reason. I I don't know. I can't see its underlay. Oh. Ah, there is a sort of discoloration or something there, isn't there? There's a discoloration from top to bottom, but we're talking about the fact it's a giant red line. It's not particularly good, eh? good is it? No. Oh. Anyway, um... Uh, Detective Gumshield, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. All right, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Uh, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about the cloth we found in the safe. Oh, I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then, once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get this over with. That looks pretty good. Oh god, what button did this? That button did this, okay. I'm wasting so much of this. can this be? What are Ema's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints are they? Huh? Oh, um, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst. Hey, you two. Over here. What's going on here? What are the kids' prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Ema for now. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Okay, yeah, we do have to actually, actually talk to him. Damn it. <laughs> oh well. So, um... The desk on the other side of the room, is that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On the day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office right now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. That's a strange reason to leave it there? He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So, since, ever since Lana left, no one ever touches the desk? No one except Chief God and the cleaning lady who's here in each morning. Still, two years have passed since the incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. 
Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, right? Why do you ask? You wouldn't... Nah, you wouldn't be... No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Let's just look around a bit more. Hey, hey, hold on! Not so fast, buddy! Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let it go with that. Sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so, what's bothering you? You two don't think the chief got... Might be a suspect, do you? What? Yeah, Mr. Wright, what do we think of him? Chief Gaunt. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? I think he's very orange. <sighs> Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings just yet. There he goes, ignoring me again. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Kevin. Now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Ah! Chief Gott! We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in science. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then I thought of a certain detective. D do you mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Y yes, sir, sorry. Oh, you in the coat? Me, sir? Drop your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, but sir... Wait, wait, beep. Now get out! Y yes sir! We'll be on our way too then. Wait! You. The one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. Uh, me? Sir? I'd like a word with you. But, but, but sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You have the spiky hair. You're free to go. Mr. Wright! Look, pal. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times. The Chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it would be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gunt was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. It's hard to believe anyone could keep quiet about it all this time. Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the Chief again. Later, pal! After that, I heard from Eva. She said the police want to ask us some questions. So, she'll be busy for the rest of the day. I see. So the chief asked him to come in with a question. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. 
But I've already told you. I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I've finally figured it out. Who it is you're hiding behind those words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. <laughs> it seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story! I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted that you did it, but there was no incriminating evidence. And that's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What's an intriguing notion? A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No. I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I ask is this person you're speaking of? What is the one that I'm supposedly so frightened of? What is this person's name? Well, when you just put him right at the head of the questions, good grief. Well, Miss Sky? Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a little bit more about circumstances? I'm pretty sure that was meant to be some kind of favorite question, but there we go. I'm very confused. We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he's respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offences. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly investigated the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of the investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you will need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. This jar piece in this strip of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gaunt himself. Now tell me! Why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders, even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright, you can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. Or, perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, it's more accurate than cooperate. 
Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You will find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk was broken. I discovered the murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was a knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another one. That would be Edgeworth's? That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that is the reason for the bandage on your right hand. Yes. It seems it got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. Miss Star. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that, by whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife? The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. Nedworth's exhaust pipe. Right, then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Ema? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Ema is so confident about Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Officer Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He'd already sold on the ID card, but it seemed he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incidents in the evidence room? I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana... You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've gotta get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer? and what went down in the chief's office two years ago. And so we've ended the investigation phase. It's been nearly two hours, Kevin. What do you suggest? I suggest we uh, leave the trial, or the commencement of the trial, for another day. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Was it dramatic? It was very dramatic. Did you enjoy being creepy as shit? I didn't enjoy being creepy. You sure? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yes, I'm perfectly sure. Have you been swimming recently? I haven't been swimming in years, dear. There's trust me when trust me when I say there's more questions about swimming to come because I've already skipped ahead. So, <laughs> so much swimming. Swimming. Swimming is fantastic. Adji! Adji's back as well. Tune in oh, next yes. time for more details about Adji. And... <laughs> Tune in next time for more Edgeworth. Edgeworth fest. Will Edgeworth survive? Will Wright survive? Will any of them survive? Is Ema alive right now? Yeah, where is Ema, actually? Where is Ema? I think kidnapped. I think technically she's kidnapped right now. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs>